Welcome to this Lenio talk. Uh, we just released Layouted Grid V2, and the idea here is to uh, look at it together, uh, see all the new features, and learn uh, CSS Grid about the spec in the in the way. So this application is a generator that duals as a learning tool. The idea is that you can drag and and create areas. For example, like I can create a header here and for example a footer and you can grab the lines and like do it as, as you wish like the the grid uh, we can create for example a sidebar that will have some configuration for the application and let's imagine that this is a, a photos application so we we can have here two main panes for the for the content let's say that this will be like the where the photos will go, and this will be where the like the people that appear in the photos are. So you can see that as we are drawing the areas, uh, we get the HTML code in real time, and you also get uh, the CSS that you need to apply uh, to this HTML to get the this grid layout. So you, you see like that we have like the main container where we are saying that this will be a, a grid, a display grid. And you have grid and play columns and grid and play rows. These are the ones that are defining uh, how the, the size of each track, like it, each column and each row is, is called a track. So for example, uh, in the rows, we see that we have one FR, 1 1.6 FR and 0 0.4. This is because we move it this line for the for the footer, you can see that it's changing it there in real time. And uh, this unit is something that is used for defining the, the sizes in, in the tracks. Like you can use pixels if you want, percentage, but FR is a, a fraction of the of the remaining F base and is quite comfortable to work with. And for example, like in the columns, if we would like the config to be a smaller, we can say that instead of one FR, we are going to say like 0.5. And you can see that also here is uh, in real time is updating. Uh, we have like here for the um, like for defining the grid areas uh, in this configuration. Like we we started with a with a setting that is that not normally like the default is to use grid template areas, but this is this is good to to start. Like we are directly defining like where each of the areas uh, start and end. Like this is the row start, for example, for the header, uh, we are saying that it's a start in like in the in the first row here, uh, then the first column, then it ends in the in the second row, that is this line, and then it will go until the uh, line four for the the columns. So this is this is how you can define but one of the nice things about the spec is that you can use uh, grid template areas and with that the idea is like kind of you do ascii art and you have a, a grid Let, let's remove for example like the header and you will see like there is like three dots here and these three dots are are empty cells uh, so if in that three dots i will place the header again and you will see that if in that each of that empty cells I put like header 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 I'm defining that this area the header area is going to go uh, in in this position uh, then I have like the config here photos people and the footer uh, and like th this is like something new in v2 that we have like all these interactions so you can quickly see how the like the grid template areas interact with the, the grid that you have defined. Uh, you can also like reorder because we remove it the header. For example, now is in the, here, but you can grab it and you can place it where you want. So this is something that when the grids are the I place it ex explicitly, like is is not uh, a difference for the layout. Uh, but in implicit, uh, like if the the area is out of place, it, it will make a difference. We, we can see how that work. Uh, something else, like for example, like you can remove, uh, like let's say that we, we don't want 
like this layout only will have like the people here. So you can see that the empty cell appear. And we can say, like, okay, like the last column, we, we don't need it. And this it will be like a simpler design. Uh, you can also add new rows if, if you need them. You can uh, specify a gap, for example, like let's say like that we want like uh, 20 pixels for or, well, 25 and 25 here. And this, this is a really nice property of uh, the gap property for grid. And Flex is also getting it now that it defines like the gap between items and it doesn't count the, the borders, the edges. So it's really comfortable to work with. And like you can see also that you, you can like move the, the lines. And if you press shift, this is something that is also new that you are going to be like more fine grain when you move. So you can like define more precisely where you're going to uh, have the area. And uh, this is for like basic explicit designs. Uh, we we had most of it, but like the interactions are a lot nicer right now. Uh, and when you finish, you can like create a code pen with it. Or now we have this create code sandbox uh, available that it's it's going to to give you like the design like with that you created like header, config, photos, footer. Uh, and the HTML and CSS directly for so you can continue to to hack in this code sandbox and share it with with other people. Uh, once you select it, create a code sandbox. If if that is the usual uh, export that you will use, it's going to remain selected. And if not, like you can get back to exporting to CodePen. You can also generate a link that you can directly share with with others. Uh, and uh yeah so th these were the features that that we have before and let's see like new some new stuff like so we reset the application and one of the things that we support right now are out of place areas normally like as we saw before uh, we were like drawing and saying like the this area is going to be explicitly defined here so here you can see like the area like we put it in these two cells uh, or like you can see, like if we don't use this setting that is here in, in this grid area. Uh, so let, let's get back. One way, another way to see it is like if we select this uh, area, we can see that we have control of the grid area here. So instead of like one, two, three, three, like we can say like this is going to go like till four, for example. Uh, so these again are a row start. This is column start, so it starts in the two, in the line two. This is a row end. It ends in the line three of the rows, and uh, it finishes at four. So here, let's let's get back and put three here. Uh, so this this is how how explicitly stating where the area will be uh, works. But imagine that like we remove this one, and instead of adding an explicit area, we will press this new button here that is that adds as a like out of place area. So when we press it, you will see that the area will cover like the first empty cell. This is because like if you look, this is using grid area auto. Uh, with this, you like the div doesn't even have a, a name uh, yet because it's not needed for, for placement. Uh, you see that the grid template areas also that doesn't show that the grid is there. We can continue to add more, more areas. And these areas will interact with other uh, explicit areas that you define. For example, like if I place an area here, you will see that this one is going to sham because this, uh, this cell is now occupied by the, this area. So something that th this is all controlled by the implicit grid and the idea here is that uh, let's let's look first at grid out of flow uh, the default is a uh, row so with this out of flow you can see like that it's first going to cover the row and then when it finish is is going to continue extending to to the next row so the the first areas that we added are like this one, 
this one, this one, and if we add one more, it will jump here. And if instead of a grid of auto flow row, we select column, what is going to happen is that it's going to first start uh, in the first cell and then like cover the full column and then jump to the next row. There is one more setting that is the dense, uh, like the packing dense. And the idea is of this, like to, to check it out, we have to, let's let's get back to this one. So let's imagine that we, we make this area bigger. So instead of just auto, we're going to say like auto span two. Uh, what, what this does is that we are uh, saying like it's auto place it still, but it occupied two spaces in the in the columns. We can, for example, like get here and say like this in the other side, like this is going to be spine two auto. So in this regard, this one is going to go like next. And let's see, we go back to the container, go here. So this this is a, a good example here. So if we, we selected like grid out of flow row, the first, the I, I one is going to be here. The second one, it has a space in the grid. So it, it's out of span two. So it has two, two cells to cover this. The next one, uh, it has the space again to cover it. And the next one, uh, uh, again, like has the space. But if we select column, you're going to see that the first one has the space. The second has a space here the I2, but the next one that should be here because we are first covering the full column and then to move uh, in this out of flow column, uh, it doesn't have the space because we, we define it as a sp span to uh, auto. So it doesn't have the space here and the algorithm is going to start looking for where it can place it. So here it, it doesn't have the space because this one is already here. Here it doesn't have the space and then at the end, like it finds that here it has a space. And then for the next one, uh, this is something that is the, the standard way to, to place it. We we are not going back and, and cover like the all the spaces. We are saying like we already are here. There is kind of like a virtual pointer that you are like going through all the grid. And so this is the next free space. But this is what the dense, uh, like this is called sparse, the algorithm. And if we press the tense button, what is going to happen is that it's going to reset the pointer every time that it has to place a new area. So instead, like instead of placing this one here where the pointer was, because we were like going like here, then here, then the last column. So the pointer was here at that point is going to say like, okay, I reset it to the beginning and I start again looking for a free space. So this is going to go here. So if we continue to add, the next one is going to find this space here. So we can, for example, like press it here and then like you can, with dense packing, you can really like get like uh, more compact designs. The problem is that it could be unexpected that you have, depending on, on the way like it doesn't follow the normal uh, placement of of the tips, no? Because uh, you you start like this uh, i6, for example, like uh, let's say like the i4 should go bef uh, after the i3, and here is is kind of that it appears before, but it, it's not that that much of a problem when you do a grid layout, and normally then is is not a bad option to use. So let's remove some of these areas. And let's see what happened. Uh, like, let's go back to this one. So if we keep adding new uh, auto place it areas, what is going to happen is that at one point we, we are not going to have more space in the grid. So this was a three by three. We have nine spaces. And the next one that we are going to add is going to have to like place it somewhere. And this is where the implicit grid appears. So this three by three grid is the explicit grid that we are defining with the grid template columns and grid templates uh, rows. Let's remove that too. Uh, and 
like if let's add one more. So we add one more, and it's going to create a new row to fit this this new um, area. So we can continue to add there, and this is going to keep adding new ones. Let's let's remove one of uh, these ones. Okay. So uh, let's see. So here we are, like in the this grid out of rows is one fr. Like if if instead of uh, one fr, like we will say like uh, zero point five here. This this you are going to see that the outer rows are occupying half the space of the explicit rows. So in this regard, you you can you can see how like these next two are like the implicit rows that were generated if we go to the other flow the column is going to go the other way like first it's a start like filling these ones and then like it will create two columns to accommodate the the next one and once like if you remove for example like if we are in this one and like let's see what happened when we start removing rows like it it looks like nothing hap it happened but like we remove it one of these explicit rows and you see that it 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 was smaller the the one that appeared because an, another um, implicit row appear so if we remove this one again like we have only one explicit row here and then all the others are these grid auto rows with 0 0.5 you can actually like this grid auto rows is also a template so you can add a new one and you're going to see that the grid auto rows template is going to repeat. So it, it starts at the beginning, like let, let's remove all the template rows. So if we remove all the template rows, you're going to see that we have three explicit columns. And then we directly define a grid auto rows template that it say like the first one is going to be say 0 0.5 FR, the next one is going to be one FR. And then it repeats if it needs a space. So 0 0.5 and then one. And then 0 0.5, and then if we if we keep adding, then we are going to have one again. So this is a very typical uh, layout where you say like I want three columns, and then like just define like the the grid out the rows, uh, like just as many areas as you have is going to continue to fill. Like if you have I don't know like strong, some photos that you want to fill in three columns, and the same you can do like remove all the columns like just add a few rows that you want and let the grid auto columns define how it's going to work. Uh, so this, this is then how like the grid uh, placement works. Again, like we can get here and we can define, for example, like this one in particular is going to be a span two, span two, or well, that, that is very big. So here we made this one like uh, double the size, two by two. So the algorithm is not going to have any problem with that. It's going to continue to, to fill the space. So let's get back to, to the start. And let's define again, like just some basic header, like footer. Maybe we don't need that many columns. And we put here a sidebar and some content. So we can say like the footer is going to be here. This is going to be like around here. And something else that we we end up having is that now you can define like the placement of of the areas, like the alignment. Uh, let's let's say like we go to the to the header, and you have this justify self. Uh, right now is in initial the default and align self initial. Uh, this is coming from the parent. Like normally, like uh, it's a, if you define initial, it's a stretch, and this is what is happening here. But we can define, for example, that instead of uh, having initial, we are going to say like this is going to be a align self start, and you can see that the area is not covering the full uh, row. It's like only a it is it is a fifty percent because we are defining here. Uh, that the width is uh, initial, we can say like, let's say that this is, I don't know, 75%, for example. Uh, so let's get back. And so this is 
uh, start and then ah, I, I modify the width. Okay, let's say that that didn't make sense. Okay, here we have. So this, this area now is at 75%, 75% of the space. And we said that with align self, we can define that this is going to be at the start, at the center, or at the end of the row. And the same with justify self, we can define that this is going to be at, 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 the, at the stretch start uh, here in the center or here. So let's say like we, we define that this is going to be in the center and this we can also say that is in the center. And also you can control per item like using justify self. If you see in the header here, we are saying justify self center and align self center, but you can also go to directly to the container. There is a grid placement property and here you have justify items and align items. And you can directly say like everything is going to be center. So, and I don't know, align items, everything is going to be like a start, let's say. So the header is not being modified because uh, we like it has like their own properties, but the rest of the of the areas that are are having like the, the default that is initial are going to have the one of the parent. So in this case, like everything is going to be center and an app. So like instead of a star, we can put center, we can get to the footer and say like, instead of these, we are going to place it to the bottom and you can control and see how, how things work uh, in this regard. There is one more property that actually only appears. So let's, let's check if we can. So if you go to grid placement, there is justify content initial and align content. And this only appear if you have the rows, for example, like let's instead of FR, let's put pixels, 300 pixels and 300 pixels. And here you can see that we have the container that occupy all the space. And we define the two columns that the, the two of them are 300 pixels. So this doesn't have enough space to fill everything. So you have like justify content for this that you can say like instead of being the, the default, you can say like center and this is going to center the two columns uh, in the center or like you can say like uh, like end. And there is other properties because like you can say like I want a space between them and I want like space evenly. Okay, around, I we, we have a bug there to fix. That's good that we, we did this talk so we can fix it. But this is what is going to happen is that if you say a space between, like the check columns are going to uh, go to the side and there will be like the space in the middle. So let's get back to center here. And the same for like align content, if you have like not enough space here uh, in the in the rows. So let's get back to it. And I think like that's it. That's mostly all the new features that we have. Of course, like we didn't mention, but you have like the copy buttons, so you can directly get the the CSS or HTML without going to create cons, cons sandbox or, or the other ones. And uh, as usual, like this is done by Lenny Labs. And if you want, uh, you can hire our front end uh, team uh, for doing this kind of like fancy interfaces. Uh, if you still are missing V1, you can, uh, like the old version is is there, like in, in case like you are very used to this one, but we hope that you like the the new version. So thanks a lot.